Twice. Okay, Twice. I think we are live. We yeah. are live. Wow, look at that. It looks like we are, yeah. <laughs> Hello, There's everyone. There's a banner that says we're alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think we should stop talking what we were talking about and like... <laughs> <laughs> go ahead yeah so hello everyone uh, i will be running this show today and i am very happy to do that uh, i am like a new podcast host so this is like a <laughs> nice experience for me i'm getting experienced right now so michael how are you doing i'm doing great how are you doing olga I'm doing awesome, fantastic, even though it's kind of um, hard for me still to get back to reality after the vacation, but I am almost like fully, fully back and yeah, and nice. it's doing okay. That's awesome. Where'd you go to vacation on? Uh, I was in Kenya uh, on a running oh. camp. So yeah, I was running nice. a ton, a ton. Yeah. And I, I <laughs> my body and my mind needed this type of like reboot. So it's great. Nice. Hi, everyone. I see people are uh, starting to come on in. So, hi, Rob. Hi, Lucas. Hi, Alan. Where are you from, guys? Maybe you can. Yeah. Hello from UK. Okay. We have someone from the UK. I think we have one person from Poland as well. Very cool. Yeah. Hi, Daniela. Yeah. And uh, Michael, you, I think I know now how to pronounce your surname. I thought it was Budzinski, but it is Budzinski, I think. Like, because Michael is, is Polish, but Michael yes. doesn't speak Polish, right? <laughs> yes. Michael Budzinski. In America, it is Budzinski. And then in, in Poland, it's Budzinski. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And Mexico, wow. Dallas, Texas, Ireland. Oh, there we go. Canada, we got some Pennsylvania. We got wow. some Yankees in here. All right. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So many people. Egypt, I see. Oh, that's a place yeah. I want to go visit. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too. Have, I haven't <laughs> been there yet, but that's on yeah, my it's a little. Radar. It's a little dangerous right now. So I'll wait for things to cool off just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> but Kenya is awesome. I strongly recommend mm. anyone. UK, New York, wow, so many. Amarillo, so many Texas, very cool. Texas, yeah, a, a bunch of people from Texas, yeah, awesome. So today we are going to talk about keyword research, which is like Nairobi, Kenya. Wow, we have a person from Kenya. Hi there. There you go. Yeah, yeah, I like Nairobi very much. So yeah, hi there. So today's topic is keyword research, and I am a I am a technical SEO specialist, SEO consultant. I have like more than 10 years of experience. A lot of what I do is keyword research as well, in addition to doing SEO audits. If you don't know me, I am uh, I uh, my, oh yeah, there, <laughs> this is my recent picture <laughs> from Kenya. So yeah, if you don't know me, I am the best uh, known for uh, SEO Sly, my, my website where I kind of share my knowledge. I also have a new YouTube channel, so like, this is this is more or less me. How about you, Michael? What are you up to? Like, tell tell the audience oh everything. Gosh. Yeah. So I have I am been doing SEO now since 2007. So we're coming up on 15 wow. years. I've been nice. in business for 17 years. I've been in marketing for 30 years. Wow. Uh, so yeah, I thought you were marketing. 30. <laughs> I appreciate that. I really do. <laughs> oh, the uh, yeah, no, I've I've literally done it for thirty years. I started in my teenage years, so okay. um, I did get a young start on it. Um, and that was back when it was traditional marketing, like the internet hadn't quite taken off yet. Um, and so, but over the last uh, fifteen years, I have taken a very uh, strategic, or I, I'm a, I'm a strategist. That's like uh -huh. by trade, I'm a strategist, and so. Um, as my media company was approaching the SEO world, I, I just saw the value in search marketing because it's people uh -huh. looking for answers they're looking for solutions. They're looking to get something right. And so they're actively uh, reaching out saying, give me something. And I like, that's what we beg for in marketing, right? Is yeah. people to pay attention to us. What's well, like, no, these people are looking for attention. They're looking to be given attention. And so that's why I really dove into SEO. And so over the years, I actually have brought, I had a huge creative agency in uh, Anchorage, Alaska for a mm -hmm. long time. And I shut it all down at the edge, uh, at the end of 2018 and, and started my digital firm. And there's only two things that we focus on now. One is overall integrated marketing strategy because of my, my experience with traditional media and new media and search uh -huh. marketing. 
because the, okay. it, without strategy, none of it works. But search yeah. marketing is always such a good core to start with for any size business. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. Super interesting because like this is the strategy, I think, is the part of SEO that's like the most, I would say, difficult, challenging, and that can like give you the biggest results. Because like even on my last webinar, I think I got a question like, I can, someone said that they can do tasks, but how to create a strategy, which is kind of like the higher level, I would, I would say. And sound strategy outperforms blind tactics every single time, just yeah. plain and simple. If you don't start with a good strategy, you're pointing in the wrong direction. Yeah. Yeah. You know, exactly. You might exactly. as well just be spin yourself around in a dark room and hope you find the door. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I see we have even more comments. Hi, right. Jim, Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, nice, nice. Oh, we got a good room in here. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. Oh, Myrtle Beach. I am jealous. It's snowing here in Springfield, Illinois. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, I've seen some Phoenix, Arizona and Myrtle Beach. I'd rather be in Myrtle Beach. Yeah, Arizona's yeah. Arizona's a little too hot. Me too. Like here, here we, we had snow like a few days ago in Poland. Now there is no snow, but it's freezing cold. Nothing oh, like gosh, in I Kenya. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Marquisha, uh, from Oklahoma. I have family in Oklahoma, South of Oklahoma oh. city. Oh, Colorado. I see, I see oh, Colorado. There's, that's pretty. Colorado that's is nuts. great for running. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was more of a uh, mountain biker when I lived in Alaska. So, uh -huh. um, I was a big fat, I have a fat tire. So okay. I'm used to trudging through snow. Let's go to the beach. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do this. I'm all for it. <laughs> for it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> awesome that's great okay so i think we can we can uh, get started with with All your right, presentation michael is going to share some awesome things regarding keyword research and after michael is done we'll be happy to answer the questions all around keyword research i'm pretty sure you will love this presentation so yeah michael thank let's you do so it. much all right, Olga, thank you. And thank you all for joining us today to discuss the secrets to profitable keyword research. Now, a quick note before I start, this presentation is centered around strategy. I am a digital marketing strategist, as I said earlier on by trade, and not a technician. So I'm not going to go it too far into, at, really at all, into the platforms like SEMrush or Moz to show you how things work. Because as we were just, uh, Olga and I were just saying, it's not about the tactics as much as it is about the strategy. And you can use any of these tools to implement the strategies um, or actually implement what you get from your strategy process. So my goal today is to show you the most profitable ways to approach keyword research. And from here, you'll be able to utilize those platforms and get the job done. So let's get uh, started with a little bit about me. We, we talked about my 30 years experience um, as a marketing professional. I'm a serial preneur. I have built um, multiple, uh, multiple, multiple, a, a few, let's just say that, a few multi-million dollar companies. Um, I'm a best-selling author of the Rule of 26. Um, I have been coined the, a visionary marketer by the American Marketing Association. And I like to tell myself as an awesome uncle of a dozen nieces and nephews. As you can, um, I also told you that I love to, uh, to mountain bike. And uh, me and my wife love to travel. We travel all over the world. Um, we definitely love Europe. Uh, and this year, uh, my birthday coming up in the in the fall, we're actually going to Sicily for some wine tasting and then uh, cruising from Croatia down to Greece. So enough about me. Um, I oh, actually one. Uh, I think I've, I've I've covered everything. There you go. Okay. So first thing I need to do is make sure that we are all on the same page on why keyword research. Because I've been seeing a lot of people approach this exercise from the wrong perspective, which eventually leads us down the wrong SEO journey. So let's dive into why keyword research is so important. Now, before we can answer the why of keyword research, we first have to answer the question of why SEO. Most of you have this, but just in case, for most applications, and my main why for SEO is to get more website traffic. Some might have other reasons, but I feel that nine out of 10 times, we're looking for more traffic to our website. If this isn't your goal, then I would highly suggest taking another look at your marketing strategy and double checking whether SEO is really what you need. For the rest of us, 
the first step to SEO is keyword research to figure out which keyword phrases will bring us the most traffic. But if what if I told you that choosing the keywords with the most search volume isn't necessarily the right strategy? You might think I don't know what I'm talking about, but I, I promise you, if we take the time to look at keyword research from a profitability standpoint, not all keywords will drive the traffic we are looking for. And that's where the first secret of profitable keyword research comes in. Knowing your who, where, why, and what equals profit. What I mean here is that if we have a clear understanding of who specifically we want to visit our website, where we want them to be from, why why we why they would want to reach out to us and what keywords they specifically use and those specific people use to find us we will get the kind of search traffic that will be more likely to do business with us without all four ingredients here our seo campaigns will end up attracting the wrong type of visitors which is a waste of everyone's time so i encourage everyone to take time to document these elements before diving into keyword research now that we know the why and have a good understanding of our target audience, we can begin diving into some key elements of profitable keyword research. The first of which is market research, which is also the first, uh, the second secret of profitable keyword research. Have I said research enough times so far? You guys give me a thumbs up. All right, great. I'm going to say it more, more times. So here we go. From my experience here in the US, small to medium sized businesses seem to skip this very important step when approaching SEO. And yet, in my opinion, it's the most important part of the process. And that's because it allows us to gather firsthand information directly from the market instead of just guessing. I don't think it's smart to assume that SEO platforms like SEMrush and Ahrefs and all of those other ones have all the answers. When we properly do market research, we also get a chance to uncover hidden gems. Yes. Tools like Google Trends can give us indicators of upcoming te uh, terminology. But if you're working with a niche market, you may be able to establish dominance with those phrases before your competition. And being first to market is always the best option. I've also found alternate. Um, I've also found alternative keywords from doing market research. Many of them were terms with high search volume, but haven't been associated with my target market. These are unicorns that you can secretly own for some time before your competition ever gets a hint of them. I like to start my market research with a brainstorming session. The initial brainstorming session is usually done internally. Use a whiteboard or spreadsheet to jot down the keywords and phrases that come to mind when thinking about your business's products or services. No phrase is bad, just write everything down. The next step, will be to use keyword research tools like Keyword Planner, Dizio, SEMrush, Ahrefs, or Moz Keyword Explorer. Type in all of the phrases that you came up with to create a spreadsheet um, uh, and create a spreadsheet to document any and all phrases with significant search volume. If you're doing this without current clients in a focus group, hold on to any contenders that you aren't sure your target audience is searching for. We will be able to confirm those in an upcoming step. Next, you will want to go to your Google Analytics and Search Console to analyze your website's organic traffic. Um, look to see if there are keywords on your list that are already driving traffic to your website. If there are, take note of where you're ranking for them and see if there are related keywords that need improvement. Be sure to omit any keywords that you already rank number one on Google. We are looking for opportunities for more traffic. So if you're already ranking at the top, your job is done with these phrases for now. Now, any related keywords you, you discover with good search volume should be given top priority on your list. Now that you have a list of possible keywords on your list, uh, yeah, you have a, a good keyword list, it's time to test them. Who do we test them with? Well, how about your current clients? That's the first kind of testing we like to do because there's no better source of marketing insight than your current paying clients. The easiest way to do this is have a focus group. You can do this in person or virtually. And if you can't get a group of 10 or 12 together at the same time, just call them one by one. 
The key is to dis, uh, the key to these discussions is to let them tell you what they think. So stay away from leading questions. Record everything and transpose your recordings. Excuse me. Once you have had all of your meetings complete, take your transcriptions and start doing search for uh, doing a search for keywords on your list. See which matches come up most often. Compare that list with a list from your meeting notes. Those matches are your winners. If you do market research like this, you will be ahead of 99% of all other SEOs in the world. It's literally the best kept secret in SEO. I know it sounds time consuming, but if you really want to get laser focused on your most profitable keywords for SEO, uh, your SEO campaign, you need to be certain you're targeting phrases that are actually being used by your target market. Yes, I know. There are plenty of tools that will tell you what is trending, but those numbers represent the masses and don't take into account your perfect clients. Only your perfect clients can tell you how they use search to find a company like yours. So trust what they what you gather from them and in these meetings and whatever they're saying is absolute gold. Okay, so now we have an initial list of phrases. It's time to, to the next step in the process, and that's to match this list with search intent. Search intent is just like it sounds. It attempts to identify the user's intent using certain keyword phrases. There are four types of intent Google recognizes. The first is informational. These searches are looking for an answer to a specific question or general information. For example, when was the iPhone invented? The second is navigational. These users are intending to find a specific site or a page like the Apple website. The third is commercial, where the searcher is looking to investigate brands or services like iPhone versus Android. And the last one is transactional. This is when we have searchers with a strong intent to complete an action like buying an iPhone online. Now, if we look at all of these in a linear fashion, we can see how search intent relates to buyer's journey or sales funnel. For a, from a sales perspective, I see informational searches used when a searcher has a problem they are trying to solve or a goal they want to reach. They don't necessarily know that they want to buy anything or that there's even a product that will help them. They're just looking for answers to their immediate question. A quick example is a business person looking to increase their website traffic. They might search how to get more website traffic. The top results in position zero, or what I call the information zone, are going to look something like this. We can see that the MailChimp has optimized um, their their listing with a list of approaches to learn how to increase website traffic. And if we click on the people also ask list, we can see IncomeDiary.com has also created a list of how to garner more website traffic. You'll notice that both results are informational and suggest that there's a how-to content on the other side of that link. This is prime content for a user who is just searching for answers. So this is the kind of keyword phrase that would be great for a marketer trying to attract top of funnel users. So say your user went down one of those rabbit holes, but never really took any action from either website. But later they wanted to get back to one of them. They would use a navigational intent keyword like MailChimp. Luckily for them, MailChimp has optimized their unique name and invested in Google ads. So they show up three times above the scroll. This is very common tactic, and I highly recommend it for most companies. When a prospect is looking specifically for your business, you want to make sure it is as easy to find as possible. And if you don't dominate your own company name at the top of the results page, you may be losing traffic to your competitors. But let's say that the user wasn't convinced that MailChimp was the answer and is looking for different options. This puts them in the evaluation stage, and they might start using terms like companies that can help me get more website traffic. We can see here that the new term is riddled with paid results, which means you aren't the only one that thinks this term is commercially viable. But your user isn't quite ready to be pitched yet, so they click on the first organic option and conduct more research. This means companies ranking towards the top 
will need to make sure that the page the searcher lands on is catered to content that lends to commercial intent and with the call to actions being more subtle. It's important to remember that searchers in the valuation stage are still collecting information, so hard sales can spook them. It's better to be in a giving mindset with this type of content. Last but not least, we have the transactional intent where the searcher is ready to take action. They may change their search at this uh, stage to something like best website marketing companies near me. There are still a lot of ads at the top, but now we also see Google Maps pop up showing us local solutions. Recent statistics actually show 78% of local searches result in an offline purchase and mobile searches using near me have increased 136% in, in just the last year. Another keyword phrase to research is buy now, which has seen something like 500% increase in usage in 2022. The bottom line is that keyword phrases with transactional intent are the most profitable keyword rank to rank for. And this is because they are being used by users ready to buy. And that's what we all want. We want users on our websites ready to buy, right? So I hope you can see ways to monetize all four types of intent because the best SEO strategies are those that take into account the entire buyer's journey. But don't think that you have to eat the entire elephant in one bite. Which brings me to my third secret of keyword research. Don't, you don't have to rank for all keyword search terms. And you don't have to rank for all keyword search term intents, especially if you're starting out in SEO. Instead, I would suggest working your way from the bottom to the top with one exception, navigational intent for your website URL and your company name. You'll be surprised on how well transactional keyword phrases convert without ranking for any other types of intent. I've personally seen companies completely ignore all intents except transactional and exceed their, their website lead goals. Now, don't get me wrong. All four are important, but if you only have time and resources for one type, more times than not, I would focus on transactional intent. So now that we understand our searchers' motives, uh, we need to see how others are capitalizing on the terms you have started to accumulate for your search so far. Competitor research is a great way to get ideas for keywords and which keywords you are ready to compete for. What I'm about to uncover here is how I approach competitor research. It's by no means the end all be all. Olga has a way and every strategist has their own way. So this is just how I do it, but it works for me. And if I can get that information that I need in an efficient manner, that's what I'm going to do. So let's dive in. The first thing I want to check is my competitor's search visibility, or what some call SEO visibility. This is basically the share of traffic that the website receives from its rankings in organic search results. I'm looking for websites that have slightly more visibility than I do. These are perfect targets to get started with. I can always come back and do competitor research again when I pass the set, this set of uh, competitors. But for now, I want to pick on those who will have the best chance of winning against. The bottom line is that if you choose a com to compete for the same keywords as a website that has too much visibility, you're going to struggle for many of the same reasons I'm about to discuss. So I like climbing the rank ladder one rung at a time. And as I usually start with three websites to research and add up to three more about every quarter. Once I choose the competitors I'm going to research, I want to, uh, I want to see what keywords they are currently ranking for. I am looking for keywords that I might want to add to my list while checking to see if there are any on my current list that, that they don't rank for or put those keywords higher on my uh, priority list. Speaking of my list, I should mention that I usually only work with about 10 keyword phrases at a time when I get into the tactics, but I start with a long master list of all the keywords I run across with notes for future reference. I will show you um, how to narrow that field down to 10 later. So 
right now on my list, I am also taking note of keyword difficulty. Keyword difficulty is an SEO metric that es estimates how hard it will be to rank for the first page for a given keyword. It's measured on a scale of zero to 100, with 100 being the hardest to rank for. Once I have a list of keywords ironed out, I start to look at the content that is uh, supporting the keywords I'm trying to compete for. I'm looking for ways I can approach that target keywords better than my com competition. I look for missing pieces in the content like supporting graphics and videos. I take notes on all keywords for all three competitors. If I don't get any inspiration, I will sometimes look for other competitors that may not be ranked number one, but are on an upward trajectory. I want to do that so I can see if there's some content that I can draw that inspiration I'm looking for. It's important to note that we are never trying to copy what others are doing. That never gets us anywhere, especially not to the top. Rather, we're looking for ways we can appeal to searchers better than our competition. The next step is taking a look at my competitors' backlinks. I do this for two reasons. Firstly, I want to see if there are sites that have backlinks from that if they have their sites have backlinks that I could compete for on my own or get for on my own. Adding more relevant backlinks will help with my domain authority, which I'm going to cover next. But for now, I want to note any gems I can take advantage of. The second thing I'm looking for is the anchor text that they're using for their backlinks. We want to see if they're uh, if any of these links have been optimized for keywords on my list. If not, we have found an opportunity to create better backlinks, which lends to better ranking for my profitable keyword list. Again, we're not trying to copy what our, our competitors are doing. We're looking for inspiration and opportunities of how we can approach our SEO better. Domain authority is the last metric I research. DA has different names depending on what SEO tool you're using. Moz originally coined the phrase, and since then, SEMrush call, uh, has called it domain authority score. Ahrefs calls it domain rating. Um, there's, there's names for all of them. Different names for different platforms, sorry. Now, there is a lot of speculation on the value of domain authority. Uh, Google leader... Uh, the Google leadership is very clear that they don't consider DA in ranking pages. So don't think you won't rank for keywords if you don't have a high DA. I use DA to give me a feel of how well I'm going to compete against other websites because it takes into account all of the uh, factors that we have just covered. And all of those factors do count towards page rankings. Your DA score is on a scale of zero to 100. 40 to 50 being average, 50 to up, uh, sorry, 40 to 50 being average, 50 to 60 being good, and 60 plus being excellent. The closer you get to 100, the harder it is to increase the score. So sites with the DA of 70 and up are highly competitive sites. I personally like to keep, uh, I personally like to compete with those who are within 10 points of me or the website that I'm trying to rank for. My personal practice is to create a spreadsheet of all the information that each uh, keyword on my list in different columns so that's easy to review over time. There is, really isn't any right or wrong way to document your research. So what do what, what, what works for you. Personally, I like centralizing all my information when doing research and feel that it, the more information that I have during this phase, the better decisions I'm going to make during the strategy process. And strategy is the next step. I have a saying, sound strategy beats blind tactics every time. I bring this up because I see a lot of people skip this, uh, skip this step uh, when doing keyword research. But as you've seen, my approach raises a lot of questions along the way. So to stop here wouldn't create a profitable SEO campaign. My approach is a four-step process. My goal is to whittle my master list down to 10 high priority keywords that I will focus on in my campaign. I know this doesn't sound like a lot of words, but if, we are, if we've done our research correctly and understand our why clearly, 10 main keywords will be plenty to focus on in our next SEO sprint. The first step 
uh, in my strategy is to clarify the types of intent I'm going to focus on. I like to focus on one intent during sprints so that the team can stay focused and in the zone. As you saw earlier, the types of content we are creating for each type of intent are different. So it's important, it is, it's more efficient to create the same kind of content in batches than mismatching and hopping back and forth. In some cases, this narrows our keyword field down to about 25% of our original list, which is a huge step towards our goal of 10 keywords. If you're using a spreadsheet like Google Sheets, you can easily clean up the keyword list by filtering your uh, intent column to your target intent. With the remaining keywords, we can start looking at keyword difficulty. This is where we start looking at which keywords we can actually compete for. If we're uh, working on a new website, we'll most likely not be able to rank for high KD phrases. This means we want to filter out high and medium difficulty keywords from the list. If you have a season site, you might want to only filter out high KD. This is a judgment call that only you can make, but I encourage you to work with the easiest to the hardest KDs. Get your quick wins. In any case, your list should be narrowed down to about 10% of its original count. For many, this would be enough to have five to 10 keywords they can use for their, their sprint. If you started with a list larger than 100, then you will need to continue considering other factors like domain authority. Factoring your domain authority against other sites will help you predict your success rate for each keyword phrase left in your site or left in your list. Basically, we want to understand who we can compete with. At this point, I'm filtering any keywords on my list that are ranking on sites that have DAs 10 or higher than mine. Remember, I'm looking for the 10 easiest wins on my list, which will be relative to each of us. But nonetheless, we need to get down to 10, and that means we have to cut more keywords. And remember, filtering these keywords now doesn't mean I will never focus on them. They will still be there the next time I do this exercise. And at that time, our DA may be closer to our competitors and the keyword will make the cut. For now, I want to keep my eyes on the prize and pick 10 keywords that give me the best chances of winning sooner than later. If you still have more than 10 keywords on your list after that, you will now need to start narrowing down where you can compete. In this step, I'm looking at keywords that include location or regional references. These are typically transactional and navigational intent keywords, but there are still many cases that can be informational and commercial. I rarely get to this point, but it's always, uh, but it always gets me down to 10 or under if I do. If your list doesn't have any to choose from at this point, you are left to start using your gut. Um, uh, using like the numbers game, basically the, this means, uh, it, it seems silly, but let me, let me, let me, let me just break it down. Here we go. First sort the remaining list, uh, by number of words, each phrase from the biggest to the smallest. Second, choose the top 10 longest keyword phrases on the list. So I have basically did a, I uh, looked at all of the keywords and I want to see which phrases are the longest. So they have five words, seven words, four words, and I'm just going to rank those there. And then I'm going to pick the top 10 longest keyword phrases on that list. And I do this because longer phrases are more, uh, most always easier to rank for than shorter ones. And my objective is to get the easiest wins possible at the moment. So when all else fails, I always start with the longest phrases left on the list. So now you have a list of 10 keywords that meet your current traffic objectives and are most likely to give you the profit results. The next obvious step is to launch into your next sprint confidently, armed with all of the information you will need to be successful. Well, I hope this information has been helpful and I have given you a few takeaways that will help streamline your process or at least improve your outcomes. Here's all of my contact information. Please feel free to reach out with any questions um, we haven't, uh, we don't answer in the remaining time we have here. I also have a podcast called You Are Buzzworthy Podcast, where we talk about every aspect of business, including money, mindset, marketing, sales, and operations. Please check it out and subscribe if you like the value. Lastly, folks, we are 
uh, we are a new, to, uh, I'm sorry, for those who are new to SEO and don't already have a tool to help research, we want to invite you to a free keyword research session where I will show you my company's DIY SEO platform that helps small businesses with SEO without them needing to learn SEO. If you're interested, please visit dizyo.biz and schedule a demo. We will show you how the platform uh, streamlines the keyword research process and a whole lot more. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Olga. Thank you, Michael. This was like awesome. And you packed so much information in like, I don't know, 30 minutes or even less. <laughs> right. And you have like, I have like the entire strategy now, how to do, how to do, what, what to do. I am definitely going to rewatch this and download the presentation. And uh, I think uh, one of the people asked, how do I get started with keyword research? I think it was Grazina. So I'm pretty sure she may be uh, she may be interested in like checking your, your platform and booking a demo with you. So yes, yeah, this will be, I think, a, a good place to start. But yeah, maybe I will just have a question before we start taking questions from people. Why 10 keywords? I never, I always pick more. And this is, <laughs> this is like an interesting, interesting concept, interesting idea, really. <laughs> focus. It's all about focus. So uh -huh. I, I always see it, it's amazing where, you know, you, it, I, you've been around long enough to, for like the old SEO uh, spam you used to get. And it's like, we'll yeah. rank you for a hundred keywords, yeah. right? And yeah, I'm like, exactly. why? Right? And then you look at the list, right? And I and I, and I do marketing research when it comes to like my, my competition by biting on those and seeing what they're actually offering and seeing if it's viable, right? Because if I can learn yeah. from my competitors, that's great, right? But uh, what I found is that ninety or not, at least ninety percent of those keywords were not profitable. See, mm -hmm. if we focus on ten keywords, yeah. we're only looking at probably three to four pages. Yeah. To, to focus on. So if you have four pages to focus on and any, and your sprints can be, I've seen people sprint for, for 30 days up to 90 days, right? It just depends uh -huh. on the, the difficulty, right? And what you have to do, do you have to do on site and off site backlinking the whole nine yards, right? You have all of that stuff. So if I only have three to four pages at a time to focus on, my team can get really good at those yeah. three to four pages. And that's why I only focus on those. And then once we've done that work, we just go back through the whole process again. Now, that that marketing research that we talked about when we're talking to our clients and stuff like that, they're going to give us more than 10 keywords. So we don't have to go through that whole process again. We're just going back to the list and working yeah. our way down through the priority list. Yeah, that, that's great. Really great. And where do you stand uh, with uh, zero volume keywords? So zero volume keywords are great for people in emerging markets. So mm -hmm. basically the masses haven't, don't know to search for it yet. So you having, being optimized for those keywords specific, and it's a very, very strategic play, right? You need to know that this is going to be the new buzzword for the thing you're selling, uh -huh. right? Um, and so yes and no, if you're a new business and you're looking for traffic, zero traffic is bad. But if you're playing the future, then yes. Go ahead and, and invest in that today, but you need to have some inside information of why those keywords are going to be popular in the near future. Yeah, sure. And I think like zero, zero volume keywords are also usually nice to have when it comes to informational queries. Very often there are tons of question keywords that according to tools don't have any, any volume, but if you like target tons of them, usually you will have some, some, some valuable traffic from them. So yeah, I also I also see that yeah, you'll get like those onesie twosies, but yeah. I also can I can it to people who buy domain names and then park them and sell them, right? Yeah. They're investing today for the problem is what's going to get you there, right? Because you might get one click on a zero because NA just means it's less it's like less than one on average, so it means uh -huh. it's only getting one per month every other month at best, right? If it's one every month, it's ten. 
Most people don't yeah. realize that 10 is one to 10. Like Google doesn't, will never show you five, four or three. They'll say 10, yeah. which means 10 down to one. So you're guessing how much volume you're getting when you're dealing with those low volume keywords. So what I do is I say, Hey, listen, guys, let's look at, the, let's look at those keywords that are 50. Because if you can get to 50 for that keyword and you get the 33% that top ranking gives you or the 24% the second rank gives you, we're at least talking about anywhere between, what is that, 12, 10 and 12, uh, does it 12 to 15 yeah. um, visitors to our site. We do that for multiple keywords. Now we're getting into hundreds, right? Going to a, a, do, Going into your keyword research for something and, and looking at a, say a short-term keyword, so two words, and it's got a hundred thousand volume. You're like, yeah, all I have to do is get to the top 10 and I'll get 2% yeah. of that. Right. Well, 2% of that, you're going to spend six to seven months doing that versus ranking for a bunch of websites that maybe are uh, keywords that have maybe 250, 500 search volume. And you're going to get a chunk of those at a time. And you add those up. The great thing about that is, is as you're ranking for all of those smaller keywords, you're building your domain authority. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, so success begets success. So grab the, the quickest, uh, wins and work your way up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And regarding zero volume keywords, usually, usually in many cases, the tool simply doesn't have any data and sometimes you may get a lot of traffic from a zero volume keyword. I am mm -hmm. like, I am doing a lot of stuff with, with those keywords and I, I find it like interesting and rewarding. Okay, let's take some questions from the audience because I have like a ton more questions to you, but let's give a <laughs> chance others to, to ask the question. I think Aga, Aga Z is asking, hi, uh, what are the criteria for targeting, not targeting specific keywords? So, Say it one are more you time. taking these questions? This question, sure. Or... Yes. Yeah. I just need to hear the question one more time. Yeah. Uh, what are the criteria? Oh, yeah. We have it on on the screen. What are the criteria okay, for? Yeah. Okay. So we we first want to look. The first criteria is search volume. The second criteria in this process is whether or not those search, those keywords are being utilized by our target market. So if you're doing your keyword research with your current clients, okay, or maybe you have a, 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 um, a focus group that um, it meets the demographics. So say you're a brand new web, uh, a brand new company, right? Um, you need to put those two together because just having volume and keyword doesn't mean it's the right keyword for your service or your product. And a lot of people forget that. It's just like creating a product and trying to sell it without researching of whether anybody wants it. Yeah. Same concept. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I agree with that. And I would also add like the criteria for not targeting the keyword is I always look at the SERP what's there. And if mm -hmm. I see that I have like a small website, my client is a small website and there are like tons of ads map, like the things that I know <laughs> they won't have. And even if they rank position one, they will get a traction a fraction of traffic then usually this is this is a no like for me an important part of like choosing keyword is always looking and diving deep into how the SERP looks for for that particular keyword how, okay. how crowded is it right yeah like, how crowded the, the yeah. less the less crowded and the higher volume search volume the better for you yeah because the more real, the... real estate you're getting right like it's like so it's, it's, it's kind of like, um, in rock and roll, right. Um, and you're trying to get on the top 10 radio stations in the nation yeah. versus farming all of your, your song to all the small local radio stations. I can get on the small radio stations every single day. Getting on a big radio station is going to take a lot of work. So why yeah. not get my music out to all these small stations? So these, these little gems, right. And build up that swell and create that visibility because the more visible I'm on the internet, the quicker Google's going to go, Oh, we should maybe put that rock and roll band on the big station. Yeah. That's a great analogy. Really, <laughs> really great. Okay. Another question. Uh, Daniela is asking, I have always found keyword research to be a daunting task and end up setting it aside for other tasks. 
How do we make <laughs> it less daunting? I it's, it's so the first is just to do it step by step. And we usually do keyword research only about twice a year. Because if, oh. you, if you're creating this list, you're giving yourself a lot of options to play with over time, right? Remember, we're just doing the work. Um, one of the questions was like, what's a sprint? A sprint is just a focus. And you can sprint for a month and just get all of the things you think you need to get done and then let it set, right? Or you could just focus on it month after month over the next six months until it does right? That's up to you. How your workflow is up to you. The research just tells you what you're going to focus on in that workflow. So really just slowing down and not being in a rush with it and spend up to a month and especially on a new website that you're working on. So if you're, if you're providing this service to somebody else, say, listen, we're going to do the, the right stuff for you for the first, say, 30 days, if that's what it's going to take, right? Maybe it's two weeks. However, your, your workflow works for you. Take the time. Slowing down actually makes it more fun because you get to yeah. be creative. And it's one of the most creative parts of SEO is keyword research. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, Duda and Grzyna. Uh, Grzyna is asking, what tools can I start with? Duda uh, says, uh, I hope Olga will touch on <laughs> keyword tools a bit. So maybe I will just say what tools I use. So for sure. me, like number one, uh, number one uh, keyword tool, tool in general is Google Search Console. And I like mm -hmm. to install uh, keywords everywhere extension that allows me to see keyword volume directly in Google Search Console. There are other ways uh, to get keyword volume in, in GSC as well. I also like SEMrush, Ahrefs. I always use them both because they also allow me to analyze how the SERP looks in exactly mm -hmm. who's ranking. I also can see the domain authority, domain rating, what the, whatever we call it, the number of backlinks. So I like those tools. And of course, I also like some question tools that generate questions like answer the public or, or also asked, which is which kind of shows you those people also ask boxes. and. Mm -hmm. This is like my tool set. And of course, Google, Google Keyword Planner. So like this is my basic set. What about you, Michael? Um, I would mi mimic all of those as far as um, the tools to use. We, you know, for our smaller sites and people who are trying to do it themselves, so small businesses, we, we plug them into Dizio, which takes in all of that stuff in an, a back, uh, back end algorithm um, uh -huh. and then just spits out like, hey, you can, th this is the... We really just give them volume and keyword uh, difficulty. And the keyword difficulty takes into account all of that other type of research, right? Um, from there, then they can do some market research and plug that in. So that that's just kind of my, my selfless plug is the, or a selfish plug is the, the Dizio.biz for the people who uh -huh. don't want to invest in all of those tools because keyword, re, uh, keyword research plan or the keyword planner and the Google ads planner, those are free. But to really get the juice out of SEM Rush and HRS, I feel the, they're paid uh, tools, right? Yeah, and yeah. so those are definitely, um, I like to focus on SEM Rush because I just like how their reports come out. And, um, but you do get a different perspective from all three of those between yeah. Google, SEM Rush, and HRS. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't think there's any wrong way of doing it because honestly, if you're building out your content properly, all you're using those four is indicators. They're not really yeah. telling you what to do. They're just telling you where to look, yeah. where to focus, right? And that's all you're looking for. You just need to be in the right direction. Because remember, when you rank for one keyword phrase, you're going to act actually end up ranking for other very closely related or semantically related keywords as well. So that one effort has multiple outputs. And sometimes we don't even know it because not even any of those platforms can tell us that that's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And do you also use like uh, tools like Surfer SEO? Because I forgot to mention that, that I also use those tools. Like there is also through SERP Analyzer, the tools that basically show you what other semantically related keywords you should include in your, in your text that mm -hmm. other pages that rank highly have. Do you use that, right. such tools as well? I use those and then ask the people is a great way to find out how people are utilizing those keywords uh -huh. when asking the questions. 
Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's take another question. Well, there's a, there's yeah. been a reoccurring um, uh, question I've seen in yeah, here, yeah. some comments, and that's SEO sprints. So somebody's like, that's an oxymoron, like sprinting SEO. <laughs> and so <laughs> I want to see there. And then another one's like, don't rush, but take your time, but then sprint. A sprint is just a project management ter term that basically yeah. says we're taking this much time to focus on one thing. That's all we're saying. Sprint in itself is it has multiple meanings in uh, for, for especially in English, but that really it's in the project management realm of saying, hey, listen, we're taking this team. They're going to go do this work. You can do all of the work for SEO of, of, of a keyword phrase pretty quickly. You know, you don't have to take your time. Now, the results will take time and you have to be consistent with the work that you're doing over time because Google definitely wants to see you consistently working on your content to make it better for your users because that's the end goal is creating a website that is good for your users. And a good website is a website that converts. So you might do all the SEO back end, on site, all that stuff really fast, but then oh. there you go. Great, <laughs> boom, right? So if you spent on one, one page four weeks for your sprint, that's a sprint. Now, your, your outcomes might come four, five, six months later. But this is okay. You've already moved on to the next sprint. And you can have multiple sprints going on at the same time if you have a big enough team. So I just wanted people to understand that like, we're not saying that you're going to speed up your SEO. You're just giving a finite amount of time of when you're utilizing or when you're working on particular things in your SEO. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a great explanation, and I think uh, there is there is a question from Grazina as well. Is keyword volume an important metric? And then we have an answer from Google Advisor that ROI is the metric. So I would say that's a good answer. I think that if you have to, it really has to do. The volume by itself is just volume, right? Yeah. So if I put if I go and rank for cars dot just cars. I just put cars in Google and there's 10 million search volume for it. Right. What does yeah. that do for my business? If I'm selling a specific tire for a specific, specific type of car in a specific region in the world, yeah. cars is not a very high profitable, highly profitable keyword for me. So volume yes. by itself is only an indicator of interest, but it's the intent. And really, honestly, it's the length of the keyword phrase that I see uh, value in because the longer that keyword phrase is, the closer they are to making a transaction. Yeah, and the only situation I can imagine when we're ranking for high volume keyword that, that is not necessarily like uh, focused on your topic is when you have a lot of ads on your site and you're getting a lot of traffic and you are paid by impression. Maybe that's mm -hmm. the only way where it, it can make, make sense in some way, yeah. but of course. Yeah, I mean, you can always make it work for you. I mean, there's like I said, there's a thousand ways to, to, to skin yeah. this thing, right? But if you're looking at the short, the, like the short answers to, or the shortcuts to success is really start with the low-hanging fruit, which is long tail keywords, sm a smaller volume, right? And yeah. then work your way up to broader keywords that actually make sense for you. Because it doesn't do you any good to have a bunch of people come to your website, realize you're in the, they're in the wrong place and bounce. Because now your bounce rate goes up, which pushes yeah. your rankability down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, great point. Uh, Simon is asking, uh, oh, there's another qu question. That's the one for you. Oh, is Dizio a software for agencies? We do have people, uh, we do have agency partnerships with that. Uh, you can email me at buzz at buzzworthy.biz and uh, we'll talk offline and show you what that looks like. Okay, so uh, Simon is asking, what does increasing website traffic have to do with email marketing software? What kind of software? Email, mar email, email marketing software. So I guess like MailChimp, right? Aweber. Okay. So, um, I guess I need to understand the context of the question. So where does SEO and email marketing, uh, come together? Is that the question? What does increasing website traffic have to do with email marketing software? So the only thing I can say is that, for example, if you publish a new article, you have mm -hmm. a big list, email mm -hmm. subscribers, you send it to them. And if they 
visit, mm -hmm. there is a chance that you will relatively quickly be ranking for a specific keywords. At least it, it used to work like that some time yeah, ago. It used to work that way. Yeah, yeah it, I'm not it, sure now, about now. Well, so now it's, okay, traffic is, is a factor, but now yeah. it's how long are they on the site? Do they bounce? Yeah. How many pages did they, um, did they visit? You know, those types of things. So yeah, you definitely want to push your followers to your website for useful information, right? So give them a purpose and give them something to engage with on that site. Not just a matter of like, Hey, go read this over here and then yeah. bounce right? You want them to go down a rabbit hole because that rabbit hole is telling Google your website's useful to the user. And that's the only, really the only thing that Google's looking for useful websites for their users. Yeah, exactly. And Aga is asking, how do I know the search intent of a keyword? So I might take this one. Go I ahead. think the, the easiest way is to type the keyword into Google and see what's ranking. Are like informational mm -hmm. guides ranking? Are there like transactional pages like shops are ranking? This is the easier way, the easiest way. Sometimes mm -hmm. there is a mixed uh, intent. Sometimes you will see like some informational queries, some mm -hmm. transactional queries, uh, tr transactional websites when Google maybe is not necessarily like sure what type of intent or like there may be different meanings behind the a given keyword. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's my observation. Do you have something to add? Yes. And then you also like, uh, I think SM rush uh, has intent indicators yeah. as well. So you can, it's a little shortcut there. Now, if you run into a, a SERP that doesn't have all of those things, so say there's not people all, also ask and there's no widgets um, or snippets uh, at the top of the page to give you those indicators. Now you can start looking at the who, what, where, why, and how concept, yeah. right? Is it where? Because where is navigational, right? Is exactly. it who can be more commercial? How and what can be more transactional? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, let's take another question. Dr. Espon is asking, what tools can I use to see backlinks for any website? So definitely you can see backlinks in Google Search Console in the links report. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think all of the main keyword uh, SEO tools will show you backlinks. Yeah, uh, Dizio, SEMrush, Hrefs, uh, yeah, and and Google, they all do that. Yeah, and usually to have the the full picture, you probably want to combine all those all those sources, including mm -hmm. Google Search Console, and like do some uh, filtering in Excel, and you will have like mm -hmm. the best list you can you can mm -hmm. get. Right, A Majestic is another one we haven't mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Majestic definitely. is a good for, source. For links, that's probably the best yeah. one. Yep. Okay, let's take another one. Um, another one. And the, oh, the, the, while she's looking at those, uh, Olga, while you're looking at that, I'm going to uh, add on to that. When we're looking at backlink strategy, it's really important that your backlinks are relevant. So getting yeah. a bunch of backlinks that are not relevant to the keywords that you're trying to rank for and your anchor text is not um, is not exactly what you're trying to rank for, you're working against yourself. You're just doing a lot of work that may or may not increase your DA, but it's definitely not helping for the keywords you're trying to rank for at that moment. Yeah, yeah, to totally agree. I think I have like a nice question from Wukash. Is it a good idea to use AI for like ChatGPT for keyword research? Not yet, because <laughs> remember, ChatGPT is pulling from the internet of 2021. Yeah. And we're in 2023. So and right. when the internet is moving at the rate of like, uh, it's like basically cycling uh, new ideas every six months and Google is changing their algorithm at least once every six months. <laughs> last half of last year was every a little day, crazy. I think, like yeah, minor right? changes every day. <laughs> and then they make minor, minor uh, adjustments every day, of course. But really what you're looking for is the current trends, right? Now, you could use JatGBT to get some inspiration of how to structure your content. Like yeah. I would love, I've been playing with it to say, hey, give me an outline uh, utilizing these, these keywords uh, for this industry in this voice type of thing. And then they give me some ideas. And, but then I take, I turn around and I take all of those ideas and I put it against my keyword research and say, okay, what fits? Does any of this make yeah. sense? If it doesn't, 
then let's go back to the well and figure it out. Right. And some people use Jasper, uh, uh, yeah. Surfer SEO or any of those. Right. All of those are great tools for inspiration. The one thing that I'm going to I'm continually will say uh, is that don't have AI write your content. <laughs> you will only win on a short term and you will have to come back and do it again when human beings do it better because nobody yeah. talks to humans better than humans. Yeah. 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 That, that's a great, great insight because that was supposed to be my next question. Should we be using <laughs> AI to create content in 2023? Okay. Yeah, I, I, think... I use it. I use it for the, the, the skeletons. I'll uh -huh. use ja um, I'll use Jasper or now G chat GBT. I'll use it for when I need a snippet of facts. So I'm like, Hey, what is the X, Y, Z of ABC? Right. I'll take uh -huh. that information and then I'll, I will double check to make sure the facts are right. But then, but that at least gives me my outline of that paragraph of facts that I just didn't want to have to put together. But it's very small piece and it's not the creative piece. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So the last question I think we can take from T. Can you differentiate between a searching for keywords or keyword phrases for a local business that service, services a local area versus an e commerce website? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, great question. T, T from Twitter. Or is that a Twitter T? All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that's fun. All right. So when you have key, when your general keywords are usually not going to have identifier local uh, local identifiers like city, state, province, country, those types of things. Okay. Um, another way um, is the near me. So if you have car best caller dear uh, best caller call yeah geez i can't talk best car dealership near me near me you're t you're telling the google that i don't need an online car retailer which you'll still get through the ads because that's their their target at but in in the uh, maps it's going to pop up and say oh you're looking for car dealers that are physically near me that's you're telling them that through that and so the near me is a great strategy of like looking at the volume for those um any small service business we really use near me a lot. The city that they're in, the cities around them, the counties they're in um, are definitely all indicators of local search terms that we start with. And then we work our way out from there. Okay. And do you like utilize near me in like uh, in the anchor text of links? Only, yeah, it's the, the problem is, is that local search is more predicated on reputation management than it is uh -huh. backlinks in my experience. And somebody can tell me I'm wrong somewhere, I'm sure. But for me, I'm looking at how many reviews I have, how many five-star reviews I have, how often am I getting reviews? Am I responding to my reviews? Am I yeah. keeping up with my Google business profile posts? Am I posting every week? Am I keeping new um, photos going on there? And when I'm closed for holidays, am I updating those? Am I offering offers in the Google posts? All of the things around what makes Google Maps interactive on a mobile phone is exactly what I'm going to be doing for my local SEO. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we... Maybe just one, 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 one last one. I think Virginia is saying, careful, GPT isn't accurate necessarily. Check out right. false answers. Yeah, right. it isn't. And what I have found is that if you ask it to not make things up, you can just say, don't make things up about this topic. It will try to be more <laughs> accurate and stick to the right. facts. That's a small tip. Yes. And remember, their facts are only as recent as 2021 right yeah. now. So yeah, something exactly. like J Jasper is going to be a little bit more accurate, yeah. but then again, you still have to find out what that resource, and you can even tell Jasper uh, and to give you sightings. So, yeah. and cite your sources at the end of it, and it'll give you the sources where they came from. So then you can go back in there, get maybe even maybe more information than it spat out. Right. And you're doing your fact checking at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So I think we we have crossed uh, an hour. So I think like yeah, any final thoughts, tips, or should oh we man, I up? think we I, I think if you can download what we did today, that's going to be enough for uh, for yeah, a while yeah. For I most think people. so. I think so. I think so. So thank you everyone for your questions and for being with us. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to go through all the questions, but but I hope like maybe. Maybe later on we will answer them in this YouTube video. 
Sounds okay, great. So, so thank you everyone once again and have a nice evening. Bye-bye. <laughs>